The Clone Wars was a huge conflict with hundreds of active fronts across the galaxy at any given time. With many key worlds for the Republic to defend, and with Separatist space being a patchwork mess, organizing any army to fight efficiently in them seems a bit of a hopeless task. But the Republic managed it. In this video, we'll be discussing the Republic's 20 sector armies and how they helped the Republic coordinate the war effort. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Sector armies were units that were larger than cores but smaller than systems armies, and each of them composed roughly a 20th of the Republic military. Originally, each was composed of four cores, though this number rose drastically, possibly before the war even began. Sector armies weren't traditional military units, instead they were more like mini militaries on their own. They never operated as units and instead delegated cores out to different fronts. Each was commanded by a senior Jedi general, a rank given to the most skilled non-counselor Jedi masters. Each sector army had an armada of the Republic Navy attached to it, as well as a headquarters world and a sphere of influence. 20 worlds from across the Republic were chosen to serve as sector army bases, and from them, sector armies coordinated troop movements across a sizable swath of space, dubbed oversectors. These sectors varied dramatically in size, and they were unofficially grouped into three theatres, the Core Theatre, the Northern Theatre, and the Southern Theatre. The six armies of the Core Theatre were generally considered reserves, and most of them were deployed almost entirely to reinforce other armies in hot zones, leaving only skeletal forces behind. The Northern and Southern armies were much more active, and either saw heavy combat for most of the war, or reinforced armies that did. The Oversectors covered nearly the entire galaxy, though the wide expanse of space under Hut influence at the time, while technically under the command of the 13th Sector Army, was almost entirely ungarrisoned. The First Sector Army, also known as Azure Hammer Command, garrisoned a swath of space deep in the Core Worlds, including Sector Zero, the group of high-profile worlds around Coruscant. Since Coruscant had its own separate defense force, the First Army used the Naxus as its headquarters and worked closely with the Republic Navy as a result. They were responsible for blocking off and eventually invading small swaths of enemy space around Scipio and Skako that were located in their zone of operations, and they also fought in many notable battles that happened in the region of the core, most notably the Battle of Anaxis and the Battle of Coruscant. It was commanded by Moff Trashta. The second sector army, which was commanded by Moff Vuru and nicknamed Green Mantle Command, controlled a swath of the core and colonies around Corellian space, and was responsible for defending the Upper Corellian Run, the Upper Corellian Trade Spine, and the Central Hydean Way. It was based on Nubia and had several major worlds and hyperlane junctions to defend, including Corellia, Duro, and Denon. The second sector army was also responsible for blocking off and invading the Nemoidian Purse worlds, and most notably participated in the Battle of Duro and the Battle of Cato Nemoidia. The territory of the third sector army stretched from the core to the expansion region along the Polemian route, and its headquarters was at the core world extreme of this swath of space, on Chandrila. Known as the Steel Blade Command and led by Moff Seardon, the Third Army did see some action in its own area of operations, most notably at Brentel 4, Pengoland 4, Castell, and Kola 4. However, most of the unit was nonetheless shipped out further rimward to reinforce the Twelfth Army and saw lots of fighting in the mid rim. From Alderaan, the 4th Sector Army primarily served as reinforcements for the 13th Army, and by the end of the war it had effectively been retrofitted into becoming an Outer Rim Command. Led by Moff Praji, White Curé's command had a wide range of influence that stretched from the Sarapin in the core to Rusen in the mid rim, with its fringes bordering on hut space. It ultimately did end up fighting in its own territory, mostly out in the mid rim and the expansion region, though it was also responsible for taking Nemoidia and Balmora in the colonies. The 5th sector army was pretty much a joke, being located in the rather secure deep core where there were no enemies to be found. It was based on Odic and was led by Moff Gan. 
Shadowhand Command relocated almost all of its resources to other oversectors, as did the 6th Sector Army, otherwise known as Black Sword Command. Based at remote Praxlis and led by Moff Weblin, the 6th Army stretched from the core to the expansion region on the borders of the Unknown Regions. The 6th Army did leave assets behind in the events of threats from the Unknown Regions and had a surprising number of repair yards and training camps at its disposal, but the region was thinly defended aside from them. The 7th Sector Army, Nick named Golden Neus and commanded and led by Moff Wessel, was based at Bill Bringy and controlled a swath of space that primarily included the Northern Dependencies, which ran between the Northern Colonies and Ord Mantell. The 7th Army was primarily defensive, intended to provide a buffer zone between the Rim and the Core, but it was also capable of reinforcing armies in the Core, on the borders of the Unknown Regions, or in the Northern Outer Rim. Situated north of the 7th Army, the 8th Sector Army was commanded by Moff Vanko. Commanded from Ord Mantell, the Bright Jewel Command's territory stretched from the friendly space around its headquarters to the northwestern swath of Separatist space, which was primarily controlled by the Banking Clan. It had to be reinforced constantly as it saw some of the toughest fighting of the entire war, especially at Munilinst and Maegido. The 9th Sector Army maintained a strip of space to the east of the 8th and 7th Armies and was tasked with breaking separatist supply lines. Led by Moff Wessex from lesser-known Parin Minor, Brazen and Petard Command saw heavy fighting at Agama and Kiyutrik over the course of the Clone Wars and attempted to cut off Banking Clan space from the Outer Hidian, a task that they ultimately completed. The 10th Sector Army, commanded by Moff Tenille from Tyrus, had the unenviable duty to guard the neutral systems around Mandalorian space. Crimson Dagger Command operated on what used to be the front lines during the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War, though by the Clone Wars, the lines of battle had shifted drastically. That said, they also had the task of dealing with the Selenon, a CIS-controlled hyperspace crossroads world that was a major target during the Outer Rim sieges. Operating from Corfia, the 11th Sector Army operated between the CIS enclaves of the Tion Cluster and on the Outer Hidian, space that was claimed by neither side. Moff Renau's Blazing Claw Command primarily operated as a salient, preventing the two enclaves from reinforcing each other while also dealing with pirates in Sith space and several separatist strongholds on the Outer Hidian, especially Sereno. The 12th Sector Army had perhaps the nastiest job of all. They were tasked with retaking the foundry of their confederacy. Moff Thurbon ran Cerulean Spear Command from Lentils and advanced steadily up the Polemian route over the course of the war. The 12th Army frequently required reinforcements from the 3rd Army and had few resources to draw on for resupplies to boot, as its territory controlled only two small swaths of Republic space, with the vast majority of the Oversector being separatist controlled. The 13th Sector Army controlled the widest swath of space by far, though most of it was actually hut space, which the Republic stayed out of with the exception of their base on Tordaria. Based at Ord Padron, Moff Buehler's Iron Lance Command frequently saw reinforcement from the 4th Army, as on top of the huts, it also had to deal with the cluster of rapidly separatist worlds around Ando. It also had to deal with some of the Republic's most important defences of the war, including the Battle of Christosis and multiple defences of Kamino. Intended to protect Rothana and Excarga, the 14th Sector Army was based on Ryloth and had to fight off multiple enemies in its area of operations, be they at separatist worlds like Siskin and Geonosis or at Ryloth itself. Moff Ravik's Red Tails Command also frequently reinforced the 13th Sector Army. It participated in many major battles and in particular suffered heavy losses in the Battle of Hypori. The 15th Sector Army was run by Moff Kintaro from the Kimet and operated in the southern reaches of the galaxy's wild space. Remote worlds like Pantora were located within Hook Nebula Command's sphere of influence, as were many pirate bands and roving separatist privateers. It was primarily intended to reinforce the other southern armies and its troopers saw action mostly on other fronts, especially on three major southern hyperspace routes. Like the 7th Sector Army, the 16th Sector Army was intended to be a modular reserve of sorts. Ivory Fang Command was based on Shardan, an inner rim crossroads world, and was led by Moff Koi. Locally, it dealt with a string of separatist worlds on the central Corellian run, but it was primarily defensive command, always ready to move coreward to reinforce the second army or rimward to reinforce the other southern armies. 
Operating between the 15th and 16th armies, the 17th sector army's primary objective was to provide a salient around the crucial worlds of Malastare and Naboo, which were home to vast fuel reserves that were crucial for the Republic Navy. Based at Fogel, Moff House's Chrome Shield Command also had to deal with separatist worlds like Kokoidia and Anark. The 18th Sector Army had one of the toughest jobs of the entire war, the defense of Ariadu and retaking the Rimmer trade route. Based at Ariadu and commanded by the soon-to-be infamous Moff Tarkin, the Night Hammer Command was nearly crushed by the Confederacy as the Clone Wars wore on, only for Tarkin's motley mix of clones and natural recruits to push them back in time for the Outer Rim sieges. Countless separatist strongholds were in the 18th Army's territory, including but not limited to Celust, Runa, Zagobar, Slunvan, and Mustafar. The remote western reaches were mostly wild space, but the 19th Sector Army was tasked with patrolling them anyway. Based on Javin, Moff Sulaimar's Dark Saber Command was tasked with protecting the 18th Army against threats from the unknown regions, and also with defending the Corellian Trade Spine. Republic control of the Trade Spine went back and forth during the Clone Wars, and the 19th Army had an important role in pushing the Confederacy back. Moff Grant's 20th Sector Army actually operated out of the Southern Corps and was based on Talan. Emerald Banu Command faced a formidable threat in the form of Separatist holdings around Yagdul and fought a back and forth war on Rima right through to the end of the war. With enemy forces in this region having control of Bestein, Thafera, Mechas III and Koivaria, the 20th Army had a difficult task until the last days of the war, when General Grievous stripped the region of naval resources for his attack on Kurison. So, those were the 20 sector armies of the Republic, and as per usual, I want to know what you think. Did you know about these systems armies, and which one would you have liked to be a part of? Let me know in the comments section below, and just before you go guys, as per usual, please make sure you check out all the links in the description below if you want to join the wider Geatsleys community on our Geatsleys gaming network, and on our discords as well. And if you want to support me more than you already are by watching these videos, my Patreon link is down there as well. And I want to give a big thank you to all those who are currently my patrons. Your guys' support honestly helps improve the quality and quantity of videos on this channel. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.